Hello, and welcome back to Hello Charlotte, Episode 3, Childhood's End. While we finished with what appears to be the prologue of the series, and now we are moving into the epilogue. And I'm telling you right now, go back and watch the videos because there is not a hope in hell that I can explain to you what is actually going on in this game without taking longer than it would take you just to watch because it's a lot so let's go hmm well aren't you eager unfortunately there's not much left to do in this place so we'll be leaving it shortly as you may have noticed this charlotte wasn't the child you wanted to save or did you actually like her more than the Charlotte Wiltshire you've been with for so long? Um, <laughs> my Charlotte's more important. Just like I thought. The Charlotte you met first is the one who matters the most. Well, aren't you loyal? You must have many questions as to why have I led you to this particular story to begin with. But do believe me. It's vital to understanding everything that will happen from now on. You surely didn't think that we were going to travel in time and change the outcome of prior events, did you? Because if you did, that would be rather unfortunate. After all, like I have said before, there's no such thing as rewinding time in the house. One story ends, a new one begins. It's an endless cycle of life. You know how it goes with games. You can always start a new one. System note, initializing new story. Please activate it manually from the title menu. What? New story. Interesting. Huh. I like that. I like that. Like, it, it tracks with the sort of meta aspect of this series so far let's go let's do it the world is clad in white and red oh that's that's unfortunate the Awakened One sings a song of hatred and despair as she drains the color from the breathless bodies. In this deafening cacophony of pain screams, I say a silent prayer. What is... What the hell is happening now? It feels like every they've just dropped us in the middle of hell on uh, this whole game. The monstrosity hovers above me, sneering. Let's play hide and seek, shall we? I'll give you three attempts, she sings songs, caressing my cheek. I feel something crawl into my ear, but I'm frozen in terror. It's futile to resist. Run, little girl, she says. Let's meet where mother is. Oh, I have to hide. But that looks like Charlotte. And yet, wouldn't Charlotte be the awakened one? No way. After threatening me, she... What the hell? You don't have the right to be dead. Not after what you've done. You absolute freak show. Psycho. Murderer. No, she can't be dead. After I've seen what she's capable of, capable of, no, it can't be. 
I've seen her die before, multiple times. Hey you, you're here, right? The one who was pulling the strings? Confirm if you are. I guess so? I see. It's just as she said then. You really do exist. Please, please help me find a place to hide. I'm injured and Wiltshire might be still looking for me. I can't afford to die here. After she, after everyone. <laughs> Scarlet vomits on the floor. <laughs> that monster. Our only problem is that I have restricted access to all the areas in the house. However, now that we have this corpse, this might not be a problem. Thankfully, I only need the eye. Scarlet brings out a box cutter. Bruh. Ugh, disgusting. Let's go to the elevator. System note, switching control strings from Charlotte to Scarlet. With Scarlet's minimalist worldview, you'll be able to see the house in a new light. Okay. Here goes nothing. All right. Well, this doesn't look any different. So which world am I in? Because like in the previous one, she literally blended Scarlet. There before, now that you're with me, I think we'll be fine. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there, there, there was no coming back from that. Oh, right. If you plan to stick around, how about I give you tasks from now on? I'm sure it'll be easier to navigate that way. So, find a way to enter the rooms on 1F. We can't go back to 2F, so this is the only place we can hide. This door's locked. Hmm, it's locked. This lock has speech recognition. We can't go past here. Cameras, huh? Who's watching, I wonder? Go. It's a storage room? I cough up blood. Ow. Sparks start to dance before my eyes. This room will do. I think I can rest here just a little. I, I don't know whether you should rest. Your injuries seem pretty severe. When I open my eyes, the lights blind me. Have I died? You have 10 seconds to explain yourself. Otherwise, I'm activating the security system. No, I'm fairly sure the afterlife doesn't have pink-haired midgets threatening me. 10, 9, 8, shh. I cover the boy's mouth with my hand, silencing him. Oh. Quiet. She might hear us. Refers to me? For hurt? <laughs> what? Whom are you talking about? Charlotte Wiltshire. Do you know her? I do. So? Is she here? No, she isn't. She hasn't come home yet. Home? Oh God. Oh no. I have to run. I abruptly get up, only to wince in pain. Can you kindly calm the F down? Wiltshire isn't here and I'm not her associate, okay? Uh, my ears. Keep your language in check, will you? You're in no position to lecture me, miss. I treated your wounds. Where's my... Thank you, Mr. Honaker. Honaker? As in Felix Honaker? Uh, yes. So? I once read a novel with a character named that. Not again. Yes, yes, I know. I've read it too. Let's never talk about this again. 
Ah, so that was a sensitive subject. It's nice to meet you. I'm Scarlet Eiler. I'm sorry for being rude earlier. I just panicked. I... All right, all right. I understand. What did she do this time? What do you mean? No, it, it doesn't matter. Charlotte Wiltshire murdered every single person on the second floor. Oh, that takes some talent. So you're the sole survivor? Yes, she wanted to play hide and seek, so she let me go. She's seriously messed up. Saying things like, I'll meet you where mother is. What could it possibly mean? She couldn't have possibly meant my mother, because my mother is kind, beautiful, and understanding. <laughs> Do you have parents, Mr. Honaker? I'm not so sure anymore. He turns away, his voice becoming eerily quiet. I decide not to press him further. I have an uncle, though. I see. Say, are there any other people on this floor aside from you and your uncle? Hey, hold your horses. The fact that I've tended to your wounds doesn't mean that we're on friendly terms now. Why should I trust you? If anything, we should quarantine you in case you brought contagious diseases from the second floor. I'm fairly sure I'm not contagious. Like I said, we can't be sure. No one here is allowed on second floor, Wiltshire excluded. So, you've never been to school? School? What's that? <sighs> My wounds were treated by a kid without a degree. What good would a piece of paper with a signature do you? Look, you aren't coughing up blood anymore. Isn't that evidence enough? You're right. I'm sorry. Never mind that. Sleep for now. If you do anything funny, Mr. Bennett will break your neck with a TV remote. This Mr. Bennett sounds like a scary person. If you try to leave this room, the doors will burn you to death. But I'll bring you food so that you won't starve. Have any preferences? No, not really. All right. I'll be back in a few hours to check up on you, Miss Eiler. You're my patient for now, so rest assured. No one here will harm you. Okay. I want to believe him. Mr. Honaker leaves the room. I stare at the ceiling. Hey, Puppeteer. Thank you for helping me get here. It worked out somehow, didn't it? I think I need a name to refer to you by. How does Lilith sound? Or would you prefer Seth? Well, I guess we'll go with Seth, since that's what Charlotte called us. All right, Seth it is. It was my father's name. You know, I have memories of the true realm. It's a place that's nothing like this world. In that realm, I didn't even have a physical body of my own. Nor was I my own person. Here, everything changed. But, even though I have these memories, I don't feel a connection to them, as if they don't belong to me anymore. Or, perhaps they didn't in the first place. Still, I feel like I should apologize to the person Scarlet Eiler of that world hurt the most. However, no matter where I look, I can't find him anywhere. Sorry, I'm rambling my thoughts. I need to rest. Good night, Seth. Would you like to save your progress? Sure. <laughs> what else am I going to do? Nah, let's just screw it. Let's just risk everything. I dreamt of piles of bodies, soaked in red, with Charlotte Wilt Wiltshire sitting atop them. Find me, Scarlet Eiler, she says. Let's meet where Mother is. Pushing me down, hovering above me, Charlotte Wiltshire is crying.
I wake up in cold sweat. Awake already? Mr. Honecker? Morning, Miss Eiler. Saw a bad dream? More like a nightmare. I... I have to find Wiltshire. Eh? Why so sudden? Were you hiding from her? I just... remembered something. Huh. And well, after you finish with my treatment, I'll have nowhere to go. Everyone I knew is dead. One wrong step, and the doors will evaporate me. And now, Wiltshire's plaguing my dreams. I'll find her and get it over with. How do you plan to do that? And when you find her, how are you sure that she won't kill you? I haven't thought about it yet. But I want to understand her. I'm afraid the logic behind your decisions is kind of wonky to me. You can't understand. You weren't there. She's not human. Charlotte Wiltshire is a monstrosity. She had her hair turn into enormous media appendages that she stabbed everyone with, as if a tumor grew on her body. Wait, appendages? A tumor? I might know what you're talking about. Please, follow me. Here, I'll help you get up. Take the IV with you. I slowly get up and follow Mr. Honecker. Oh, what the... <laughs> what is this? Organic matter infected with a parasite. We were able to extract it out of Miss Wiltshire while she was sleeping. Killed her in the process, but she respawned anyway. But there's a whole pool of it. I know, after it obtained a host, it kept growing like a tumor. We were able to contain it because the host isn't sentient in any way. It's a viscero complex, which is basically a brainless mass of organs. With the sentient host to feed on, however, this parasite can manipulate the fabric of time and space. I call it the Oracle. Oh. If it's this powerful, then... Can I become a host? What? You have to be kidding me, right? Were you listening to what I just said? Yes, I was. I'm fairly sure this is the same parasite that Wiltshire used to cause the massacre. If I become its host, I'll be able to... Did the sleeping pills impair your thinking processes? Miss Eiler, it... It's basically suicide. I want to agree, but all that comes out of my mouth is... It doesn't matter. Huh? No, I... Find me, Scarlet Eiler. Just... Please. I have to find Wiltshire no matter what. I need the Oracle to face her as an equal. No, no. What in the world am I saying? If you say so. Huh? He agreed? We've only met yesterday, nor are we friends. So I'm not really in any position to argue. Besides, I... Uh, no, it doesn't really matter. I'll do it. So let's go. By the way, you seem to be quite knowledgeable about Wiltshire. I've been monitoring her for a while. Have you ever seen anyone die a gruesome death and have an exact copy of them walk in like nothing happened a minute after? There's something seriously off about that. Right. I thought the same way. Plus, Miss Wiltshire herself is mentally unstable. She seemed to be adamant of the conviction that all of the house's inhabitants are NPCs. NPCs? Non-player characters. Apparently, she strongly believed that this world is a game. Is that so? That's 
ridiculous. Although what she said about puppeteers was true. So what if? We'll need to take one of the vials from the cabinet on the left. However, we can visit the Oracle Pool again if you want to. Although it is gross, I find it strangely fascinating. Here it is, God in a jar. It seems empty. It's a parasite. Of course you can't see it. However, it's desperate for a host. Despite being this small, it's extremely powerful. Still, it might drive you crazy. Eat you from the inside. Are you sure it's worth the risk? No, I don't want this. I have to find Wiltshire. I'm scared. I have to find Wiltshire. Please, let's call it off. I have to find Wiltshire! <laughs> it is. <laughs> if you say so. Let's get started then. All right. What do I need to do? I'll operate on you and insert a part of the oracle into your brain. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just going to shove this thing in your brain. It's fine. I have to put you to sleep first. It's a brain surgery, after all. Drink this. Okay. Will you manage by yourself? You do not believe in my abilities, do you? Sorry. I can't help but be skeptical. I know. There's no guarantee your brain won't reject the foreign substance. And your mind, too. You might not recover after this. I'll prescribe you suppressant drugs to prevent the parasite's rapid reproduction, but I can't promise anything. Nothing about this is fine. Find me, my mind supplies. Fine. I have to find Wiltshire. Let's start, then. I close my eyes. Hey, you're shaking. Are you scared? I'm not. I am. I feel Felix Honecker reassuringly grip my shoulder. I'm so pathetic. I squeeze my eyes shut, trying to calm down. But then, a thought occurs to me. I'm no longer alone. For the first time since I woke up in this world, someone is here for me. Even if I make a mistake, there's someone to guide me. Even if I fail, there will be someone to remember I existed. Seth is here. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> uh, uh, hi! <laughs> well, well, well. What do we have here? A cute little mind library. You will deny it, but you in fact believe that we are some kind of a god. A deus ex machina to help you achieve your goals. But more than that, you're terrified of us. Terrified of Charlotte Wiltshire. Say, how did it feel to watch all your classmates get turned into mincemeat? They all were oh so nice to you, but bullied Miss Wiltshire all the time. Why is that, we wonder? And it was no ordinary bullying. After all, her story wasn't R-rated for nothing, was it? Just look at all those camera angles. It's all her own fault, they cried. You knew, yet did nothing to help. Because the truth is, you didn't like her at all, did you? Treating everyone like NPCs, putting herself above all of you. Miss Wiltshire was really unpleasant, wasn't she? I try to speak, but all that comes out of my mouth are pained sounds. Aw, too bad you can't counter our speech with a witty comeback, right? All right, we don't mind giving you some freedom of speech. 
The oracle waltzes around the place, falling apart and reassembling all over again. <laughs> hey, class rep. Why the sudden determination to find Wiltshire? Are you sure it's not mind control? I don't know, but I'll find her and make it clear. I couldn't understand her during her lifetime, so maybe I'll understand her in her afterlife. She seemed to know something I didn't. <laughs> Are you sure you'll succeed at all? <coughs> I'll succeed, no matter what. With Seth, it's possible. We made a deal. <laughs> oh, how lovely. But how can you be sure that your puppeteer can be trusted? It seems like you're quick to trust each passing stranger once they are even remotely kind to you. For all we know, they might be on Wiltshire's side. They're with me now. It's all that matters. They might be simply curious. It's not like they're deeply invested in your character, having known you for a few hours. Charlotte is everyone's favorite girl. And look at you. You're obnoxious. Keep quiet. You're just a pest. Sure, sure. We'll shut up. The oracle falls apart again, turning into a pulsating mass of organs. I lay down on the floor, curling into a ball. It's okay. I can do this. Uh, yeah, save my progress. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if there was like that it was like a very big change, whether you had to choose between being Seth or Lilith. Um, there's a few things here that like, I'm like, I don't know whether how much of an influence it had, but anyway, we'll see. Morning. How are you feeling? Uh, that's not a good sign. My head hurts. Get it off. Get it off. Okay. Hey, easy. Wait a moment. I'll run a quick test. As I thought, this is bad. Your body is rejecting the parasite. You won't last for long. Figures. How much time do I have? A week? Maybe less. Can I do anything about it? No. Congrats on getting meat cancer. And for how long have I been out? Three days. We moved you back to the storage room after the operation. We? I talked to Bennett and Florence. They agreed to cooperate. I see. And Wiltshire? Still not back. I can assume she might have left to another floor. To find her, you'll have to go up. Then 2F should be out of the question. I doubt she would go back there. Hmm, that might be true. We can narrow down the places by detecting the ones with anomalies. Oh, that would be of great help. Let's go then. Florence will help us with the coordinates. She's the tech specialist here. Follow me. Hold on. I don't know which way I should be going. This way, apparently. <laughs> Hi, I'm Florence. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Ah, hello, Florence. I'm Scarlet. So, Felix said you accepted the Oracle voluntarily. You'll die in a few days, right? Uh, well... Florence, please. Have some tact. Uh, sorry, sorry. So... You two wanted me to find the coordinates of places with power anomalies detected, right? I found four. I sent the data to your PC, Mr. Honecker. Good job, Florence. You can always count on me. Let's see. We've detected the signs of Wiltshire's presence on 4F, 6F, 9F, and 11F. The first dimension is the language land. It's located on the fourth, fourth floor. All right, I'll be going then. Wait, 
What is it? Your condition is still unstable. Are you sure you'll be fine on your own? I don't need any help, and I don't trust any of you. We're nobodies to each other. Indeed. However, you won't be able to operate the elevator with your level of access. We, however, have access to the floors from 4F to 9F. Ah, uh, damn it. He's right. Why not go straight to 11F, by the way? There's a problem with that. Anyone can go to 11F, but no one comes back. It's the point of no return. So, I'd strongly advise going there last. Fine, I don't have the time nor the strength to argue. Just, let's go already. The sooner I find Wiltshire, the better. You don't care about anything else, huh? I'll be going with you this time, then. Let us depart. Have a safe trip, you two. Thanks, Florence. <laughs> okay. The elevator's door. The the la la elevator. The elevator's doors slide open, and something rushes in, completely filling the room. Can't breathe. What is it? When I regain my consciousness, I find myself gasping for air. Suddenly, my mind becomes filled with arrangements of letters, words, sentences. It's suffocating. I open my eyes after what feels like an eternity. Where? Hello. I'm sorry, I don't really understand what you're saying. They're saying that they saved you from drowning. It's the language of the old world. Honaker, you're okay. Well, duh, I didn't lose consciousness like you did. Where are we? In the Logos village. It's located in the dimension inhabited by anthropomorphic languages. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Coffee cough. We don't have much time. My scanning device has detected Miss Wiltshire's presence outside of the village. All right. Wait, what did I just say right now? Uh-oh. Looks like you got infected. What? Try saying something. Just like I thought. It must be because you almost drowned in the word sea. What does it mean? Is there something wrong with me? Yeah, well, you got the local version of a cold. Pros? You'll be able to understand their language. Cons? None, really. It wears off after a while. Ugh, great. Another disease. Hey, don't insult it. If anything, it's the fastest way to learn a foreign language. Albeit temporarily. Alright. Fine. How do you happen to know so much? I don't happen to know. I've been studying these floors for a while. I thought of them as dimensions at first, but it would be more correct to refer to them as floors. Is that so? You're quite dedicated, huh? I just want to be like uncle is all. Anyhow, try talking to the person who saved you. Thank you for saving me. You're welcome, dear guest. Our purpose is to serve you speakers. Feel free to ask me anything. Okay, about this place. Logos Village. Currently, all the languages are on the verge of extinction, so we ended up uniting our lands. So, we're the only village left around here. Oh. Each villager has a gift, the full knowledge of a specific language. Before, we had multiple representatives of each language. Now, each language is singular. Why so? Did something happen? Yes, something happened to the word sea. My friends disappear every night. They leave the village as if something is calling them. Then, they never come back. The word sea used to be our home. It gave birth to all of us. But then, 
We evolved and conquered the land. However, as of late, our people keep returning to the sea. They leave without saying a word and never come back. I think I understand now. I'm sorry, but how can we get to the sea? Hmm. Do you want to disappear too? No, we want to find out what's causing the disappearances. Right, Mr. Honaker? Yes, I'm sorry, but we cannot stay here. Ah, is that so? You'll have to pass through the gate to get there. The gate, huh? Are there any special entry requirements? If you solve the riddle, you'll pass through the gate. I figured it wouldn't be that easy. May you be blessed by the prism, and may it grant you its light on your journey. Here, have a cookie. It will cheer you up. Acquired a fortune cookie. Seth, new task. Leave the village. Let's do our best. The prism is important. The prism is our hope. The prism is bright. The prism is warm. The prism is kind. The prism is wonderful. Logos can mean both word and discourse. Oh, but discourse is a quarantined word. If we don't pray near the prism, we will eventually disappear. There's a journal lying on the floor. We flip through the journal. Look, there's a page titled The Riddle. There's only one sentence written on it. Let's write it down. Acquired a clue. A clue. All right. No, I need items. Items. Oh, I guess I should look in uh, that diary. I still haven't read that. We crack open the fortune cookie. It says zero equals nine. What kind of fortune is that? Okay. Four is an upside down perpendicular, it says. Huh. Do I need to go into all these places? Okay. Who are you? Welcome to the gallery. Here you can have two tickets. The exhibition is R-rated, three visitors allowed at a time. This month's exhibition, Mind. Read the introduction text. A body, clumsy, uncomfortable, gendered, uncertain, sexual, repulsive. A mind, a bouquet of fears and flaws and intrusive thoughts, wonderful and god-awful. They do not match, yet form a whole. Let us admire the imperfection. Exhibition by Charles Eiler. Huh. The Disorder. Read the poem. Sure. They thought you were pretending. They thought you were kidding. They thought they'd play along. Believe me, I do know that you're not a liar. Anorexia bulimia. Eating was wonderful. Eating was awful. Eating was blissful. Eating was sorrowful. Eating was joyful. Eating was mortifying. An apple a day. Couldn't you keep the hunger away? Death of personality. To you, whom I no longer know, there was no other choice. Just one can stay. The other has to perish once you've failed. Right, a failure. That's what you are. You couldn't. You haven't. 
You didn't. You weren't able. So let me gently lower you into a tub of acid. Watch you slowly dissolve as I put on your skin. There's no doubt I'll be the one. Thought yet another failure. Fluanxel? Listen, dear child, we will split the pill in two. One half for me to make me want to get out of bed and work myself to exhaustion. Second half for you to calm your heart and soothe your fears. No one will notice we're not the same. Obsessive compulsive. Wash and repeat, it's not enough. Wash and repeat, it's not enough. It's not enough, it's not enough. Huh. Something wrong? I'm fine. This place makes me feel sick. Huh. Interesting. Come short if you add a second letter to it. What four letter word becomes short if you add a second letter to it? You want the final clue for the riddle, right? What a simpleton. Hush. Acquired a scrap of paper. S equals 8 is written to it. So, hold on. So, S equals 8. O equals 9. Oh, I see. Oh, I get it. Okay. Okay, items. The exhibition is R-rated. Three visitors allowed at a time. Zero equals nine. Four is an upside down perpendicular. S equals eight. Order did I get these in? Okay. No. Be these three in what order though? Okay, I have no idea what I just did. What does it say? Okay, have an achievement. 
We're getting close. Already? Yeah, the source of this dimension's anomaly is up ahead. Brace yourself. <laughs> I'm rowing, I'm rowing. I don't know where I'm supposed to be rowing. Oh, this way, I guess. This way? Same as Isler? Yes? What do you plan to do when you find Wiltshire? I want to talk to her. There was clearly something she knew about this world that I didn't. Truth be told, I don't understand a lot of things about this place. It's so much different from what I was used to. Different in what way? Well, this place just doesn't make any sense. The only place even remotely resembling True Realm is the school. I never left the second floor because of that. It was the only place where I felt safe. But Wiltshire leveled it to the ground. I have no place to belong anymore. Row, row, row. Are you nervous? I'm fine. The sooner I find Wiltshire, the better. I wonder if we'll discover the secret behind the disappearances of the villagers, too. That's a big black circle. Hold on tight. And so we got sucked into a pitch black vortex. Okay. Bleh. My head hurts. Mr. Honaker, are you okay? Yeah, sort of. Ugh, I should have worn a hazmat suit. We're underwater? Suddenly, Felix's features become tense. Miss Eiler, look up. I do as I'm told. And the scene that unveils before me is... Oh. That... That looks... Awful. <laughs> what is this? Looks like we found the missing villagers. They're all... Tangled inside. It appears that they were absorbed into this thing, whatever it is. Can we still save them? Well... Holt, you cannot go any further. Who are you? I am the guardian of the Word Sea. I protect the Great Cluster. This is how it should be. The Great Clutter? <laughs> the Pure White One came and unified us. The Pure White One became the core. That was both our and her wish. The pure white one. Is this about Wiltshire? Where is she? My hypothesis is that there's more than one Charlotte Wiltshire in the house. More than one? But how can that be? The Wiltshire who lived on our floor never went to 4F, did she? However, there is something I don't understand. Why are you guarding it? Isn't this word cluster the reason for the extinction of your people? The great cluster is not the cause, it is the consequence. Can't you just tell us what's going on? I think I get it. The great cluster absorbs all the existing languages into it and unifies them into one. And this floor's Charlotte Wiltshire must be in the center of all of it. She's the core of the great cluster. The guardian nods in approval. The core? But why do this? Aren't your people suffering? This is how it should be. The speakers are hurting. The speakers want to understand each other, so we will endure for their sake. Looks like we've come across a purely altruistic civilization. But why does it have to be like this? The villagers aren't happy about it, if anything, they're all depressed. It does not matter. We exist to be used by the speakers. If they want to hurt, we will become their weapons. If they want to deceive, we will become their shields. If they want to connect, we will become their bridges. If this must be achieved at the cost of our lives, so be it. This is how it should be. Let's go back, Miss Eiler. Our Miss Wiltshire isn't here. There's nothing we can do to help them. Right. 
Goodbye, Word C Guardian. Farewell, speakers. And so we returned to 1F, and I fell into a deep sleep. Oh, hello, Oracle. Morning, Miss Eiler. Rise and shine. I find myself unable to get up from the floor. My body feels heavy. Huh? What's wrong? Not feeling well. What about your little MacGuffin quest? Shut up. The Oracle extends their hand to me. Here, a helping hand. Things might seem a little hard right now, but let's get through it together. I don't take the Oracle's hand. Aw. Oh. If you don't accept our help, your condition will worsen, you know. My condition doesn't matter. You're nothing more than a tool, and I'll be the one to decide when to use you. So don't you dare manipulate me. Oh, you're just so afraid of being incapable, aren't you? Because, in truth, our little Miss Scarlet Eiler isn't all that smart, is she? Intelligent, athletic, and all around perfect. Just who in the world is that? Your super ego? You only try to seem proper and organized, when in truth you struggle with the most basic memory puzzles. So much that you'd rather have your puppeteer solve them for you. But that's okay. You don't have to be special, you know? Just remember that we accept you just the way you are. Honaker isn't here. I should go look for him. And that's where we're going to end this episode for now. This game. It's so interesting. I, I know I'm just going to have to spend so much time with it after this playthrough and just try to dig into the deeper levels of it. I, every time I think that I have it sorted, what it's trying to do, it throws something out at me that I'm just like, no, maybe I'm wrong. For the longest time, I thought the whole house and everything else was purely a representation of some kind of mental illness or that it was all somehow in Charlotte's head. But that doesn't seem to be the case anymore, especially after like everything that was revealed in the first part of this game. So we're just going to keep on going through and see if we can come to a conclusion. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video. I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.